Good afternoon, fellow Toastmaster and dear guests. My name is Venkat Palle. Today, Sergeant Adams, the meeting number 716. There are some ground rules that we need to follow during this meeting. First, now please turn off your mobile phones or put them in silent mode. And second, do not talk about sex, politics or religion during this meeting. Toastmaster International is a near century old organization helping its members to grow in the area of public speaking and communication abilities. As for the mission of Toastmasters, we provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop their communication leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Without further ado, I would like to call the person who takes this meeting forward. He is a Toastmaster since 2009 and looking every opportunity to refine his leadership and communication skills. Let us put a hand together to welcome Toastmaster Saravanan, who is presiding us. Yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. Thank you, Toastmaster Venkat Pali, the all-rounder of uh, Toastmasters, Mini Toastmasters Club. You might be wondering whether you have reminded one month back, <laughs> like the Sergeant at Arms of last term, as well as the President Officer for this term, for a change. Because change is the only thing that is constant in life. And for today, there is a change because of some certain circumstances, we have to take it over. And thank you. And how are you all doing? Great. Excellent. And with the sound of the imaginary cable, <laughs> I declare meeting number 716 open. I can see several dignitaries who have joined today's meeting. Immediate district director, uh, Toastmaster Satish Menon, thank you for joining us. Founder member, PTM, uh, Sampa Saudaraja, thank you for joining us. And then PTM, Thomas Abraham, thank you for joining us. Couple of important announcements I have to make. How many of you have registered for the D120 world record. Excellent. At least four or five I can see. But others also, if you have not done already, please ensure that you do that. Because this is one such event where and like everybody can participate and you will also get some mementos as part of that from the Guinness record as such. Not from the Guinness record, but I think it is a world record. Uh, so please ensure that you register for that. For registering, there are a couple of things. One is you have to have your GPA or net banking so that you have to pay for the records. Okay. Yeah. For, for your names to be printed in digital format or in the form of a uh, memento as such. The second thing that is needed is there is a time limit for that. So you have to ensure that you have to register before that. As far as I am I, 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 I concern, concerned, like I mean, there are around 350 people who have registered already from the D120. So there are still some more slots. Please ensure that you do that. That is another thing. And then I can also see the youngest participant for today. What's your name? Akshay. Thank you for joining. And uh, I can see like, I mean, uh, those forces something and medley is something like from 6 years old to 80 years old. I mean, we can get the guest over here. I can see some of, some of the guests also have joined. Let us understand their expectations and what they are here for today and then what their suggestions are for today as well. Madam, uh, Gopati Madam, can you please let us know? I have some guests to join. Yeah. And getting more Learning never stops, and Madam Bhomati is a living example for that. Thank you, Madam. And we can also learn a lot of things from you, and you have been an inspiration for us. You have been coming here very regularly, and you, in fact, she is the first person to come also <laughs> for today's meeting. So uh, that is something that we can all learn from that. Now, um, so one of the important things I have to mention about the XCOM here is, the XCOM is taking a lot of efforts to ensure that all the recordings are kept in YouTube or are registered in YouTube as such. So please ensure that you go to YouTube or also other social media channels and ensure that you do a SSLC. What is SSLC? 
subscribe, share, like, comment, so that those monsters as well as medley also can reach greater heights. So, what are the social media channels on which medley is there? Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all the things that you might need in LinkedIn also. So, please ensure that you do an SSLC and. Just share with your friends and families as well, so that they also can get benefited out of that. Because what Madam Sita told is about learning, right? So learning is everywhere. So you all, we are all here for learning, and this is a platform where we can learn our communication as well as leadership skills, which will be useful for others as well. Now to take the meeting forward, we have we have the Toastmaster of the day, and today's Toastmaster of the day is the person who is very passionate, very enthusiastic. And who has a carved a niche for evaluation? Please put your hands to welcome Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Atishay, to take over. A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Perseverance. One word often heard of in corporate meetings, everywhere from corporate meetings to third grade model science classes. Everybody talks about this. I didn't prepare a lot for today, so let's start by trying to persevere through this meeting. Let's take 30 seconds and think of the word perseverance, not giving up, grit. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? If nothing comes to your mind, please take out your phones, Google the word and tell me the quote that comes to you, that you'll see. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Mountain climbers. Mountain climbers. Is someone going to try to Google and come up with something fancy? Civilian. <laughs> uh, yeah, what's that? Civilian is part of perseverance. Yeah, this is part of perseverance. Civilian is perseverance. You get reverence. That is also part of it. That's the part of So that is the first master in him, you know, coming up with wordplay to decorate a speech. So we got things like giving up, uh, not giving up, or mountain climbers who are known to persevere until they reach the top of the mountain. Can anyone think of something bad about perseverance? Take some time. It's hard because of, from the point of time when we are small, we are taught to persevere, we are taught to never give up. Giving up is cowardly, only the weak give up. You need to persevere, you need to work hard, you need to have a goal, you need to keep working to it. But what if that's not always true? I have a friend, he's a little elder, like he's a little older to me. He's been preparing for the UPSC exam for the last seven years. He's the only child, his mom and dad are both retired. There's no one in their family early and this time, the last time, the last time I went home, he was telling me that I've been doing this for seven years. He is genuinely unhappy with where he has, where he is in his life. Does not have an earning source. All his friends are settled, they have families, they have jobs, they're doing something with their lives, and all he does is study all day and prepare for the next exam. Did perseverance pay him well? This made me question the fact and just the just the very notion of how we as a society treat perseverance as a virtue, we, we, we pretty much deify perseverance and giving up or just deciding to not continue to work hard is treated as cowardice. So it's not always good to persevere and that, that is the question, I'm not here to tell you anything. I'm just here to ask a question and to make everybody in the audience ask themselves whether persevering, whether always keeping on going, going, going is the right thing to do. And just based on this story and several other experiences, I feel that there are at least three ways or three times, three occasions where it's okay to give up. When it's okay to you know, decide that, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. Maybe I should reassess and do something else. The first one being, of course, if whatever you're doing, if it makes you unhappy, and I say unhappy, not uncomfortable, because if it makes you uncomfortable, it's probably a good thing and you should do it, just like TD topics. But if it makes you unhappy, then it's highly likely that you you put yourself in a bad place and I don't think anything in life is worth doing if it's just taking away your happiness for extended periods of time. So number one, if it makes you unhappy, 
reassess, think whether persevering in the same direction is good. Perhaps if this guy, if this person, instead of uh, instead of sticking to UPSC for seven years, if he had tried to do something else, something where he was innately talented, perhaps he could have explored engineering. He's good at programming. Perhaps he could have explored a computer science job. But uh, so that is one. That is one. That is one point of time where it's a good idea to reassess. Then a lot of people want to give up, and I draw from this same story just to make sure we're on the same page. A lot of people do want to give up, but the thought that comes to their mind is, what will everybody else? I've been doing this for seven years. For the last seven years, I've told my uncle, auntie, chacha, bhatija, all of them, that I'll crack UPSC, and now if I give up, they'll all laugh at me. They'll think I'm good for nothing. They'll call me stupid, and this makes them want to continue, even though at this point, he's not as committed to the goal as he was seven years ago. He does not want to crack UPSC as much as he did seven years ago, but he's afraid to give up because he's afraid of what other people will say. And the last part, which draws from the second point, is uh, what, what people call the sunk cross fallacy. He's invested so much already into this endeavor that he does not want to give all of that up. And this happens to us all the time, right? Let's say you, you went to watch a movie, and the movie is not good. You spent half an hour there, you paid 200 bucks for a ticket. And you're like, oh, I spent 200 bucks, I spent half an hour. Let me just finish the movie. I don't want to waste that money. So you end up wasting that money and an hour of, uh, an, an hour of your time. So the same thing, but on a more severe time frame. He, he spent seven years doing this. Now he's too afraid to give up because what happens to all this work that I've put in? Now, the thing with, uh, and it all comes back down to the fact of how perseverance, uh, how we as people value perseverance, value determination, not giving up. You look up quotes on perseverance, if someone had Googled perseverance, I'm willing to bet all you'd find would be quotes like quitters never win and champions and this and that. We have stories, we have stories of Thomas Alva Edison who, who failed like hundreds of times before he went the light bulb. We have stories of mountain climbers who went on, went on to climb to the, to the mountain or to, to the Everest mountain. The same two stories though, they overlook thousands of other stories. Edison failed thousands of times before creating the light bulb. But Edison was also a scientist who failed school. He chose to give up school. Imagine if he had continued on persevering with his education and no, I want to become a PhD, my mom wants me to become a PhD. Would we have a light bulb today? Perhaps we would all be sitting in darkness. If the mountain climbers that Thomas had talked about, some of them do reach mountain or do reach Mount Everest, but not in their first attempts. What if they continue to persevere in their first attempt and die? They would never have made it to the peak. So oftentimes, what I'm trying to say here is to not glorify perseverance as something that you absolutely must practice, but to be willing to stop, reassess, and then determine if what you're doing aligns with the greater goal. With that said, I would like to call upon the GE for today to, uh, to proceed with this meeting. And just to quickly make sure that the guests are on the same page with the flow. The GE is responsible for evaluating the meeting. So we'll have GE, we'll have tag players, then we'll have a TD session, and you have the agenda in front of you. So we'll follow, we'll strictly follow that agenda and yeah. So the G for today is Toastmaster Sarvanan, already introduced by the Sergeant at Arms. So I'll just call him up onto the stage. And the world is long, right? So Sergeant at Arms introduces myself as a visiting <laughs> officer. Visiting <laughs> officer introduces K. Modi. K. Modi introduces myself as a GE. And you have to talk it for one more time. At the end of this, there is another more, one more session also. So I'll be coming here in installments. So for today, my role is a general evaluator. Mm -hmm. As a general evaluator, I will be evaluating the entire session. That is, what is what is that that happens before the meeting, during the meeting, as well as post the conduct of the meeting as well. So I have a team of <coughs> members who will be supporting me in this endeavor. See, what normally we do, we evaluate in the form of five different parameters. First is timeliness. Then we go for the enthusiasm of the members, then the performance of the members, as well as the organizing ability, 
and then we will look at the overall proceedings. So all the process and everything. So these are the five parameters against which we measure the conduct of the meeting and provide a report at the end. Why are we all doing this? If you see those masters, it comprises of many different walks of life. You see, college goers, academicians, IT professionals, doctors, everybody is part of this Toastmasters group. And everybody does evaluation in one form or the other. For example, what we do, we normally evaluate the food in our home. So that is one form of evaluation. Then we evaluate our children. That is also another form of evaluation. We give feedback to our colleagues in the office. That's also another form of evaluation. So in Toastmasters parlance, what we normally do is, what we see, what we feel and what we hear is what we evaluate. So that is why we are here. And one more important thing is, we evaluate all the role players as well as speakers who come here to the stage and we do the evaluation. How it will help them is, it's like a battery. Battery has both positive as well as negative. Right? So we call it as what are the positive points as well as what are the areas of improvement. That is the reason evaluation is very important. You have to take both at the same time. What are the positive things that we have done? What are the areas where we can develop? So these are the two things that will help us. So that is the reason the general evaluation and the list of evaluators are also here. Then, who are all part of this team? So we call it as gatekeepers. Normally call it as tag team also. I call it as gatekeepers because it comprises of grammarian, accountant, timer and evaluators. Apart from that, there is one more E also. That is everyone in this room. Because you will be given a QR code also at the end. What you have to do here is there will be a feedback form also. So you understand what the roles are, what the responsibilities are and what the speakers are speaking. Just take a piece of paper or note it down mentally. And then when the feedback form comes, please provide that feedback to your role players as well as speakers. In that way, it will also help. You will also learn more about evaluation. For that, I will call upon the gatekeepers now, so that you know their roles and responsibilities. And whatever you have noted it down as part of your feedback, please ensure that you give it back to the role players. At the same time, if the evaluators <coughs> talk about those points, just give a clap or a thumbs up or a smile. That will show that both are in the same frequency. So this is the role of Grant general evaluator and the set of team members. Let me introduce the set of team members as part of my general evaluation team. First, I would like to call upon the grammarian. So the grammarian is a person who has a niche for himself. He is a person who is positive in nature and he has joined recently, but he has taken up enthusiastically on various roles that are offered by Toastmasters as well. Please put your hands to welcome Toastmaster Wilson. My role is to respond to this and pay close attention to uh, all of you, the speakers, uh, then listening carefully to the, the language uses. I will make a note of your uh, any improper uh, language uses as well as any outstanding words, any uh, sayings, thoughts or quotes. It is also my duty to introduce the word of the day. <coughs> So for today's meeting, the word of the day is adept. This means uh, proficient or uh, expert or you can uh, also use very skilled. So an example, uh, say, uh, you can say politicians are adept in offering promises or uh, she is adept in dealing with the media. So I request and urge all speakers to use this word extensively and uh, 
I'll also share my report as and when called up during the meeting in terms of the proper usage of the word of the day as well as of the uh, theme of the day. Thank you, Dr. Masters. Thank you, Dr. Master Wilson. Quite wondering, like we normally call the tag players, that is the timer or counter and grammarian. Why I called the grammarian first was I wanted to ensure that the word of the day lingers in your mind for long. And even the our counter as well as the timer will be able to use those word of the day in their speeches as well. So that is the main reason for that. Now let us go ahead with the our counter. See, the our counter is played by a person, the role is played by a person. If I have to tell about one word about this person, I would say hard work. Because this person starts when I mean starts with the icebreaker, but overall, like I mean, he was able to give speeches of the speeches. And he was somebody like who has got that attention to detail because he always carries an iPad and notes out everything and then showcases like how things are going as well. At the end of the meeting, he normally comes and asks, okay, what's the feedback for my speech or PT sessions as such. This is a very good quality, I would say, because this is the kind of person who will improve leaps and bounds. Please put your hands to welcome Toastmaster Kena. As an accounter, my role is to check everyone gives his speech properly and uh, there should be no interruptions and uh, there should be no like and uh, repeated words. Purpose of my speech is, means uh, role is everyone deliver his speech as fluently as they can. And uh, if you talk about perseverance, then I would say, yeah, we can learn from each aspect, like we are good in something and something not. And uh, with great mentors like in Toastmaster, we can learn that we can remove our R counters and have a fluent speech. So, over to you. After my report, I will give. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. Shri. Now we come to the end of this tag rules, that is the timer rule. See, the timer rule is played by a person, I always call him as an all-rounder. Because if this person is ready for all the difficult rules. Today also, when there was a circumstance like we have to just play the account, I mean, play the sergeant at arms, immediately I asked that person, okay, can you please repeat your script that you have already done one year, one month back? So he was ready. And this is the kind of person who will go places. Please put your hands to welcome to Master Mr. Thank you. Good afternoon once again. As a timer, I will be helping the speakers practice expressing a thought uh, in a specific time. Uh, I will be timing the prepared speeches, evaluations and table topics. I will show the green card at 5 minutes. I think I don't have to show it here, everybody knows, right? Uh, 5 minutes and yellow card at 6 minutes and red card at 7 minutes. And you have 30 seconds grace period. For evaluators, a time is 2 to 3 minutes. A green card is uh, 2 minutes and yellow card is 2 minutes 30 seconds. And the red card is at 3 minutes. For table topics, each speaker is encouraged to speak for 1 to 2 minutes. I will show the green card at 1 minute, the yellow card is at 1 minute 30 seconds and red card at 2 minutes. If you speak under time or over time by more than 30 seconds, you will be disqualified and are not eligible for awards. If you speak less than 1 minute, you will be disqualified. I will report qualifying times when called upon at the end of the meeting. Over to you. Thank you so much for your So with this we have come to the end of the CAT team or GAT team, there is one more E team that is evaluation team which I will be able to introduce at the end of the speech session as such and when called upon by the Toastmaster team. I would like to call the Toastmaster of the day to take over the proceedings. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so now it's time for one of the most awaited sessions of the Toastmasters meeting which is the prepared speeches. And mind you, we have two prepared speeches today. Both of these speeches and just the speakers when it comes to prepared speeches, they put in a lot of time and effort just coming up with things to say and making sure that their message is conveyed to the audience. 
Our first speaker today is delivering her icebreaker speech. I would like to call upon Toastmaster. But before I call upon Toastmaster Lishana, uh, I would like to call upon her evaluator to please come up and read her project. Okay, uh, my speaker for today is uh, Toastmaster Nishana. Uh, Toastmaster Nishana is uh, telling a first uh, speech from Level 1, Project 1. The purpose of the project is for the member to introduce themselves to the club and the basic structure of public speech. Uh, timer, please note the duration of the speech is uh, four to six minutes. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Toastmaster Nishana, Life of Charter and Water. Life of Charter and Water. Before I start the speech, <coughs> before I start the speech, I would want you to forget whatever. Toastmaster of the day was talking about perseverance because my speech is all about perseverance. <coughs> so, yes, time when you can start now. <coughs> the wit to win, the desire to succeed, and the urge to reach your full potential. These are the keys that will unlock the door to personal excellence. Greetings, fellow Toastmasters and guests. My name is Nishana Vijay. I grew up in a small town called Muthupet, which is surrounded by beautiful mangrove forest and rivers. My family and I moved to Chennai when I was in high school as I wanted to pursue a career as a chartered accountant. Before I finished my high school, the pattern of the CA course got changed and it was no longer necessary to have a degree to enroll for the course. So parallel to my high school, I started preparing for the CA courses. In general, there are three types of exams in CA. First is the foundation, second is the inter, and last level is the final course. And after the foundation course, you will have to go through for a three and a half years of articleship in an auditor's office. And during this period, you are not authorized to attend any day colleges as well. So in two months, from completing the high school, I've cleared my foundation course and enrolled for the article ship in my lab. Typically, our day starts at 6 a.m. to classes and then 9 a.m. to office or client place and then 6 p.m. back to classes and then ends at 9 p.m. with no exceptions on Saturdays, Sundays or even any festivities. This rigorous training period inculcated the value systems in me. I successfully completed my article ship and I have landed in a job as an audit manager in an auditor office. It was only on my first day of the job that I realized that my true calling is in the IT industry. I got to meet with the founder of the firm, founder of an IT organization, where I had gone for the audit on the first day and ended up having a job offer from the same firm after six months when I have completed the audit. So I had quit my job from the auditor office and then joined the IT company. The industry was new to me. The terms were completely new to me. But I had the determination that if one has the passion to learn and ready to put in all the hard work, anything is possible. In a very short span of time, I was able to do multiple successful implementations and I was also doing parallel successful implementations for very well established organizations as well. During this whole period, for work I had to travel to multiple places across India and those opportunities gave me the confidence to handle any difficult situation. The founder of the organization and I became close friends. I became his prodigy and he became the mentor of business and life for me. Subsequently, when a legal situation arose in the company, my background on taxation and the corporate law helped us tremendously to win over the situation. And 
eventually we ended up founding our own company, Workline, together in 2016. Today, we are into business for six years, having five different office locations in India, serving over five lakh employees on a day-to-day -day basis, and processing almost 600 crores of salary on a monthly basis. Today, we are a passionate 120 team members, and I head the company's operations, quality assurance, and finance department. Steve Jobs once said, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backward. And you have to have the trust that those dots somehow will connect in your future. That, ex that quote has become my life. Though my education and my profession are not directly related, my education taught me the will to win, the desire to succeed in whatever I do. And also, my partner has shaped me to be who I am today. Though meeting him was just a sheer luck for me, that moment has redefined my complete life. And today, when I look back, from the girl who moved from the small town to a co-founder of a hard tech startup, I would say the hard work and the perseverance connected those dots in my life. I learned that joy is always in the journey and not in the destination. And I'm here to share that personal and professional growth with all of you at I promise all of you, we did not scheme this, we did not plan this. Toastmaster Nishana came up with all these examples by herself and uh, proved the point that you know it's not necessary you stick to whatever you start with. If you're studying for CA, it's not necessary you end up becoming a CA working at a firm. Our next speaker for today is Toastmaster Anuradha. Now, Toastmaster Anuradha is a professor at the Department of Physiology at Satyabhama College and she believes in treating without medicine. She's a doctor who wants to be able to treat, to treat patients without medicine. Before I call her uh, up on the stage for her speech, I would like to invite her evaluator, Toastmaster Jagan, to read out the project objectives. And that is my introduction. I forgot to give him one. Toastmaster Anuradha is delivering her speech level 1, project 3, from the pathway Dynamic Leadership. The, pa the project is Introduction to Vocal Variety and Body Language. The purpose of this speech is for the member to practice using vocal variety and body language in a speech. The title of the speech is Over. Over. Thank you, Toastmaster Jagan. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Toastmaster Anuradha. Over. When we throw a boomerang, it will come back to us. Are you aware? Daily we are receiving our boomerang during our daily life. Good evening, Toastmasters and guests. On a humdrum morning, I was getting ready to my college, and my kids were packing their bags for the school. And I served breakfast for my son. Younger one ate silently and went to wear his shoes. But elder one, after having one bite of idli with chutney, he shouted, Amma! You know, I was scared. Why is shouting like this in the morning? Then I went to what to hand. What happened? He asked me, why did you make it? Chutney, this is so spicy. Then I tasted it. It was not spicy at all. It was not that good, but it's okay to eat. <laughs> then he was, why, I was wondering why he was shouting. Rohan, it's okay. Now it's time for the school. Have this. Let's go for the school. He told, no, I will not eat this. It's I told you to prepare only tomato chutney. Why you prepare this chutney? I don't like. I will not eat. Then I didn't utter a single word. I was a little angry. Then I told, okay, it's okay. I will not realize the uh, uh, taste of home food unless you go outside and eat the hotel food. Then again he told, hotel food will taste only, good only. It is not like house food. 
There will be varieties and it will taste good. Then I was shocked. Okay. Partially is true. Hotel food, whether it is hygienic or not, it will taste good because of the ingredients. Then I, I, I thought it is uh, time to go to school. So no more arguments. So I told, okay, I will pa pack your lunch. So take the lunch bag. He told, no, I will not take anything to school now. I am very angry with you. I will not take any lunch or anything. I, do, I want to start today. Then I was worried. Then I uh, kept silently the lunch bag along with the school bag in my car. And I started my car. He came inside and sit silently. Till he reached the school, he didn't utter even a single word. All of us are going silently. When getting down from the car, he sat in his low voice, Amma, bye. He told in a low voice. I told, hmm, okay. Then while uh, going to my uh, college, I was very upset. I thought, I am an adaptful mother. I am taking care of kids. When my uh, husband was traveling, I was uh, handling them well. I was thinking like that. But hearing, uh, um, the, I am thinking about the conversation. I was a little uh, stressful. I had a tear film uh, in my ear, eyes. I was not able to drive my car. So I stopped the car and I wiped my eyes. Then I uh, switched on the FM. I started hearing Inerata songs and I started driving the car to the college. Till then I was thinking, what is the reason for this uh, talk and shouting in the morning? I couldn't get the answer. So I landed in the college. After that, I totally forgot about this and I was in, uh, involved myself in my college work. So then while evening, while coming to pick up them in school, uh, I was able to hear Rohan was asking my younger son Lakshit, Hey Lakshit, see whether Amma is still angry with me? <laughs> and hearing that, I started laughing. <laughs> Sorry my dear sir, I didn't uh, remember that at all. I completely forgot in the morning itself. I didn't remember till evening. It's okay, happened is happened, forget that and get into the car, shall we go home, I told. Then he come to me and he apologized. Sorry ma, I was a little tensed in the morning because of my science, science exam. That's why I am a little harsh. I will not do that again. Please uh, forgive me, he asked me. Then I thought, I told, okay, my son, don't repeat it again. Then at that moment, I was thinking, Suddenly, I, um, I realized that the uh, boomerang which I sent came back to me. Any guess, my dear friends? <laughs> when I'm, I was in stress, at times, I used to shout at my kids, What are you doing there? Why have you kept here? Why are you playing without reading? Like that, I used to shout them unnecessarily. They used to see at me why I am shouting without any reason. Same thing I got back on that day. So at that time, I learned the lesson. The kids will not learn what you are saying. They will learn what you do. So from that time, I stopped uh, shouting at my kids because I don't want to get boomerang baby. Over to Dear Modi. Thank you, Toastmaster Antaraba. <coughs> a lovely speech about the boomerang with a profound message. Now, all of us know how to talk to, at least I know how to talk to my kids in the future. <coughs> the next session is uh, so, all of you have been sitting in the audience, listening to speakers, listening to me, President, all of us come here blabber, waiting for your turn to speak. Now is the time when you get to speak. Oh, okay, sorry, my bad. You still have to wait a little bit more. The next session is the moments of truth. Uh, we'll have the next speaker. We'll have uh, the session I was talking about after the moments of truth session. So to conduct this session, I would like to call upon Toastmaster Satish Menon, the immediate uh, director. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. There are a lot of people.
things that we do in those masters. But at some point of time, we all have to see whether the things that we are doing, are we doing it in the right manner or not. Especially at a club level, when we are do these club meetings and when we are looking at certain activities that happen in the club. All of us meet on a daily basis. There are members who give their speeches, who get evaluations. There are membership programs that we run. There are members who come up and say, finish by level 1, level 2, level 5, DTM. There are new members who join the club. So what is it that we are doing right and what is it that we are doing wrong? That is what we reflect something which is called as the moments of truth. Now this is something, a document which Toastmasters International has developed and they recommend that a club go through this self-evaluation twice a year. As of all of you know that most of our XCOM terms run for every six months, though some clubs have it for one year, but usually it runs for six months and they recommend that this moments of truth is done twice a year. For the simple reason is it's only when we reflect as club members and as club XCOM and see what's happening in the club, we'll know what is it that we're doing right, what is it that we need to improve, what is it that we're not doing. At the end of the day, all of us are learning in the process, no one of us is an expert. So it's only through this self-evaluation that we learn. Now, I assume all of you have got a copy of this document. Anybody who's not having a copy? Now, if you see this document, it's uh, basically divided into all the activities that we do in a club. If you go to page 2, it talks about first impressions, which is how our guests greeted, how the guests made to feel comfortable when they join a club. So it's the first impressions. Then the second, uh, Bob talks about membership orientation, which is when the guests convert to members or for the existing members, how are they inducted into the club? Do they have a formal mentor? Are educational programs, learning needs discussed? Are speaking roles assigned? All of that. So, at the end of the day, when somebody joins Toastmasters, they are all joining with a specific purpose. Nobody is joining here because they have time on their hands and they have got nothing to do. Everybody is joining for a specific purpose and that's what this membership orientation box addresses. The third one talks about fellowship, variety and communication, which is again about how are we engaging the members in the club. Then on page 3, uh, it talks about program planning and meeting organization, how well are the meetings run. Now in this club also you would realize that we don't just wake up one day and decide this is going to be the agenda. Right? There's somebody who's working on the agenda, there's somebody who's reaching out to members and saying who's going to give their speech, what speech are you going to give, what roles you're going to take. So all of that is how well are we doing it. Then you've got membership strength, which is again uh, talks about the number of members in the club. How well, how well is the club retaining the members? How well is the club promoting the members within the organization? And the last one is achievement recognition. See, for members who complete their educational awards, how are we recognizing them? One is internally and the other one is, of course, filing their records with Toastmasters International because your recognition comes from there. When I say recognition, the formal recognition in terms of a level completion certificate or a path completion, all of that comes from Toastmasters International. Now, if you look at all these boxes and the ranking above, it's got a ranking from 1 to 5. So, 1 is we never meet the standard and 5 is we always meet the standard. And what, as a club member, what we are supposed to do is, for each of these boxes, you are supposed to rank. And with your honest opinion, don't discuss with anybody, just an honest opinion to say, how do you feel for each of these, like starting from first impressions, for each of those, what is the number that you will assign based on the current scenario? Don't look into the future based on what's happened in the past and today. Uh, how, what number would you assign to this? And what, at the end of it, what they say is for every number which is rated 3 or below, or for every point that is rated 3 or below, you will have to write what is the cause of that challenge 
They say, why are you rating that at a three or something? And what can be done to address it? So that's what it's. And, and if you want to kind of see what are the best practices, then it is on page four, where it says for everything like. Whatever is a challenge, what could be the possible cause and what could be the recommendation. Now these are all Toastmaster generated recommendations. This may or may not be applicable to the club. So when you are writing out the causes and when you are writing out what can be done to correct it, please look at the local scenario also when you write it down. But this will just give you an idea of for each of that. For example, they say guests are not showing up to visit the club. This is a challenge. What could be the possible cause? Guests may not feel welcome sometimes when interacting with a close knit group. Group, new people need kind of get left out. It's something that we've seen happen. And what is the recommendation? Then they put a recommendation there. Uh, same way it goes for evaluations. Some speakers are hypersensitive to constructive feedback. So how could you kind of address that? That also is there. So this is just a pointer to that. What I can do is, there are two ways to do it. One is you can divide yourself into groups and then each group picks up a certain area and says, we'll discuss and fill it. The other way is, every member kind of fills in whatever they feel is the current scenario. And then maybe after, say, how much time have we got for this activity? 40 minutes. So maybe after like 15 minutes, we can have each one stand up and speak about one area where they have rated three or less. You don't have to look at the fours and fives because you know you're already doing that well. Say a three or a less, three, two or a one, whichever is there, we can have some of you stand up and speak from each area. And then what you could think as the main cause of the challenge, what can be done to address it. The best part about this at the end of it, <coughs> the president and the VPH or the XCOM rather can collect all this data and see as a club what is that we need to address, what is it that we are doing good. So I can say that your time starts now. We got we are at uh, 3:45. We've got time up to say 4 o'clock. We can take 4 or 4:05 4, to fill this up and each uh, each segment and be very true to yourself. Uh, don't you don't need to write something because you feel that if I write something wrong, somebody will get uh, annoyed and all that. Because it's a club. It's a joint ownership of each and every member, and we all need to kind of know what. We need to get out from our club meetings. And if something that's happening good, please mark it as a four or a five. If something you feel is not happening well, you may decide on what points to give it from a three, two, or a one. Yet tags are not being provided. I don't know if it's a practice at Medley, but since it is not being provided, I could not give more than three. Okay. At least it will open up to a discussion whether should there be name tags. If that is a practice, then why are we not doing it? It's a practice in some clubs. Most clubs do not follow. Yeah. Okay. Because some clubs actually, the XCOM, they get the name tags. Mm -hmm. So they read, and then the guests who come in, typically when you are sitting across the table, they will say, write the guest name and put it, okay. put it there. That way, when people, instead of somebody asking the guest who your name, what your name is, and all that, it's written there so they can. Okay. So it's not a mandatory practice. Not a mandatory nice to have. Get the name tax from, uh, you got a vendor here now in India who can get it done for the club. Mm -hmm. I've seen some clubs in Chennai have that, so they try to get new ones every six months. Mm -hmm. Some have yeah. a generic one, they'll say president and the club name, so it gets handed over to the mm -hmm. next president. Mm -hmm. I can't remember there were three now. Yeah, pin also you can, but pin you have to order from here. Mm -hmm. Tags you can, the name tags you can trade here to India, okay. pins have to come from there.
From the, the practice earlier works, I used to, we used to use this, the best whole chicken at first. It introduced to an available office manner and uh, it was simple whole chicken at first. So it is good, in fact. We can revive that practice. So please 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 making notes of this. My response to this is it's a genuine thing that's being said by someone who was a, who is a guest of the other day. So I give it some weightage. The answer would be with all of us. Everybody have tea. Make a conscious effort to talk to you. If I could. What has happened in the last two years because of COVID? A lot of this in-person meetings were suspended. So a lot of those practices <coughs> went out of. Now that we are coming back to in-person again, it will take some time for it to come back. Online meeting, like uh, DTM Sampan said, 4 o'clock is the meeting, sharp at 4 o'clock people will log in. But an in-person meeting, they will all come in 15-20 minutes before. No, there is another point. Earlier, long back in time, all clubs had this idea, at least intended practice, that all office banners should be there more than 5 minutes before the meeting. Not just the sergeant and all all of it. In Medley, I remember when the people would come, we used to take an introduction to all the office bearers and even non office bearers. Yes, members who are already in there used to do it because the Toastmaster will always shake hands and introduce this is part of our initial practice. Thank you. You can remember that. Thank you. Any other uh, point and first impressions, which is a three or less? <coughs> Now we can go to membership orientation, the next one. Anybody who's got any feedback about a point which could be a three or less? Yes, sir. So, uh, different accommodations for members with disabilities. Uh -huh. So, typically, uh, here we don't have so much uh, problems, but we need to look, at, look ahead and see how we can make it more uh, disability or friendly. That is one thing I have written for the club considering the location. And the second thing is, what does EMI provide from accessibility or for disabled people? Like for them, uh, what are the options EMI provides for them to... Postmasters uh, per se doesn't uh, provide anything special. What I can say is, uh, last, year, uh, last year there was one person who was visually impaired. He was from, I think, somewhere down south, one of the clubs. Yes, sir. He was a district champion. District chapter or first runner up in uh, table topics. So he was coached by the club. So he was, but he could, his eyesight was very weak. He was not completely blind, but I think he had some 90% loss of vision. So the last two years he was coming up as a district finalist. Last year I think he was the runner up, first runner up or the winner. I'm not very sure. So, so. so two types I help on. We need to move to the leg problem. It's quite common. One of the TTM Beckett in uh, Tamil Nadu, he is having that, he used to use this uh, guy, he dressed with some car. Oh. We give him special this one and not for this. Another common thing we found is from CTM and from uh, Wordsley, one member he used to come regularly to meet him in Wordsley. Anupam Yadava from Wordsley and then Tayran uh, Jinsa. Both had very bad stamina. We used to accommodate them, we used to give them a regularly table topic, patiently wait for them to complete and encourage them. And both of them went beyond this and secured themselves. That can be done if people are right. Because uh, when you register for the members, in PMI site they are asking their checkbox whether they need any uh, accessibility inputs. Mm -hmm. So we, we usually we don't check it. But uh, when we ask the members, we are not asking them whether they need any uh, additional or Special requests. Maybe the member form going to One could be venue wise, is it easy for them to access the when the second could be like the example I gave. Now this person couldn't see, like the timer card which was coming up, he couldn't see the timer card. So they had a bell, so they will ring the bell. To say for green it will ring once, for yellow it will ring twice, for red it will ring twice. So he will know the he will know the time. So those are some of the things that sir. Yeah, but you can tell uh, members like this is not a forum that will not allow you to be a Toastmaster if you have some kind of a, what they call as a disability. You can still 
be a member. Open for everybody. As long as you are 18 and above. Presentation of pins and pan, uh, pins, manuals and comments. I don't think we are doing it. Manuals is anything not there. The pathways there is no manuals. Pins is something which the club can look at. What do you mean? I would say that the pins are so not. Is this something that PMI like? What is a pin? What, what is the pin? Like 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 club officer has a pin. The president, VPM, VP. Same thing as name tag. Here, number. Name tag is different. Name tag is the name will be there, the designation will be there, and the name of the club will be there. Pin is like a small pin which you can. All members get a standard pin which says where needed for the club. In it, there is a green pin that says superseded by the new one. Where needed for the club. Everyone can wear it in uniform outfit also. So do we have it? Like did we have it? You can buy it. Our club can buy it. Club has to buy it. You know, 750 is kindly consider anniversary. Please as well. Yeah, I already raised this point. Club has to buy it because it's not. It has to come from here in the US. So they don't allow it to be made by the local vendor here. But what they have done from this year is the local vendor can make the name tags. So name tag you can order with the local vendor. So guy called Muskurado. Uh, he is the one who supplies all these trophies and all of these stuff. And he has been authorized by TA to use the same PA standard, which as good as buying the postmaster in Anastasia. But you are buying in INR, you are not buying in dollars. Unfortunately, it is something which TA has kept in themselves. So that if you order, it has to be paid in dollars and it has to be shipped from there to the shipping place. So, since it's a small thing, like is it not possible to just uh, get something else? Like instead of a TI pin, just get a medley pin. What if we get? No, no, no. Branding, branding will come. You can create something as medley, but you can't put the Toastmasters International name there. Okay, so that is that will void it brand idea. But there are some clubs who have ordered those pins last year and it keeps rotating from one X to the other. Every six months it will stop. It's got a uniqueness to every pin. When you look at the pin, you will know. But badges is something you can look at. Those won't cost much. And even like if you want to recognize the members, there are those recognition ribbons, which is a lot of it is available with the district. You can reach out to the district director RP. So when you're speaking in the club, if somebody won the best speaker award or somebody got the best table topic, you can give a ribbon which is there. Club can also order the ribbon from Muskura, it's not very costly. It comes in, I think, bunch of 50 or 100. You order and uh, you can choose what to do with it. It can be a rolling ribbon that you give it and you take it back, or you give it to the member and they'll be happy that I've got the best speaker award. The best evaluator, the best table topic speaker. And there's one which says. Even first time, but first time, all those. Those are made in India now, so those you can order. Those. I said that Mr. 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 Mr.
Don't read the title, but the ribbon was given. <laughs> Learning needs assessed. It has to be clean. If it's not been done, uh, I don't know, two or three years. So I would request the VPA to, to... I know it is a back-breaking work. But I would suggest the learning needs or at least whoever who, who is there right now, 37 or 40 members, maybe we could connect with them personally and understand what, what do they want. Okay. Manager what, can do a better job. There's not be a big burden. Who will be accounted? Uh, Revu as the VPE had done it for me, Revudar Nair. That's the last I know. There was an Excel sent out to ask where you are, which pathway you are, what is that you want to do, and your right. progress. So the learning needs was assessed that way. It was not perfect, but at least an effort was done. Not only level, some individuals will say, My grammar is bad, I want you to. Ah, Whoever right. can help me, so that type of thing. So that comes out when the VPN has a personal relationship or a friendship with that person, trusting them, they will know, okay, this is what you want, I, will, I may give you roles that suit you. Like, uh, you may not be, uh, since you are working on grammar, let's not do the grammarian role for now, maybe two weeks from now, three weeks from now, you could take care. So that, uh, if it becomes only the mentor's role, then it does not, uh, it, it becomes unaccounted for. That's true, I mean, club, if you are monitoring the health of a club, then the VP needs to know then who is at what level. Otherwise, what happens sometimes the more vocal members will get you, the ones who are not very vocal, they will feel that we are kind of left out. Yes. Actually, uh, we, are, we are using DC Street mode. So, in DC Street, there is an option of giving a short term course as well as So, that can be something that can be used by the uh, members and that can be used by the mentor or the everything and see that. So, that is something that can be done so that. All 42 will be able to enter their roles so that VPAs can be in a position to track that. And today, with pathways, when you select a path, obviously, a lot of us would have gone through that self assessment, which would have shown what, why are you selecting that path, right? Because you already know what you need out of those masters. If it is aligned with that, <laughs> then at the end of the day, Obviously, there needs to be some connect to somebody. Yeah, exactly. Not everybody is proactive to come and say, I'll give my speech next week. Right? Some need to be told to give. Mm -hmm. Some are afraid to give. Right? So, all that, all that is there. Just that human touch. Correct. Some may not have a mentor. Some may have a mentor, but that mentor mentee thing is not mm -hmm. working out properly. You can have all possible provocation combinations. So, that's something that you can, if it is end of the day, that also affects not only the ECP of the club. It also goes a long way in retention, retaining members. Mm -hmm. If somebody who joins the club and feels that they are not being looked at properly, mm -hmm. they will not be going to renew in the next season. Let's say this is. Uh, uh, if I may, we are on a very good phase now, I am mean, in my course and say that. At the same time, we have not fully really recovered from COVID times. COVID, before COVID, there was a lot more personal interaction. Right. Uh, in various ways, uh, Jagan, to you too, uh, you know, uh, for every member being to understand that. I think we must get back to that because I think we, nobody, I'm not faulting, because we lost, we've forgotten that. That's right. So I think that is something worth looking at. I don't see a column for that, but I think that might be. Because with COVID, I think your membership got spread so widely. Sure. Earlier, it's a very close group, right? Everybody used to come here. Not only this club, every club. When COVID came in, members were like spread all across the world. So obviously, there wouldn't be one to one connect to that extent. One now we that we started back in person with a lot good time to build that up and uh, ensure that everybody follows their education journey properly. That's one of the most important things in Toastmasters anyway. Right?
he may not he may not like the meeting, that's fine. But having because somebody forced him to do that different topic, he shouldn't go. That's where we are, as a group have faith. That's, a, that's one thing which we all I always like about anybody comes in as a guest, don't call them immediately unless they are comfortable to come and speak. Yes. Right? Most people are only coming in as an exploratory to say what's happening. Some might have genuine stage fear. Okay, so they are just coming as to see what's happening. You suddenly call that person and say speak in front of an audience. You are very right. He or she may not turn back from the next meeting. So. That person will not. I don't see him. Yeah. I would request for one to be PM. My suggestion would be take consent from the guest whether they want to. Take consent. Yeah, yeah. It is always done. Yeah. But this is a loss of some individuals. Sure. They missed the, how would the club look? <coughs> you should ask then and there, are you comfortable? Can you take it off? Miriam, come on, please. You will make our club also there. Sure. Can we get that to three? Uh, two points. Yes. Three, two points. One, I must compliment all of you for not giving a low score for regularly scheduled social events. I don't see anything at all. There, what we did, if you remember, we did this uh, Elliot Beach event. Whoever was present there will smile, right? Even that will, that becomes a social event. It, you know, it's a hybrid. We, I would recommend it. Uh, and uh, the other one is uh, clubs. Uh, I was saying, uh, some of us, I can see some seven faces who were there at the Elliot Beach. Okay, okay, yeah. Very, 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 very remind you about that, you will smile, not about the team, but you know, there's something about it. <laughs> right? Second is, uh, second is newsletter. Not just for the two marks we get for uh, Golden Gavel, for people in various, uh, certain stage in life, name being there as a man. Kindly consider it, I'm willing to help. Like just to add one point, many clubs are having a confusion between a magazine and newsletter. Those must have wants us to do newsletter because it involves our own people. Okay. So that is more meaningful for our club. Anybody's got an article, you are free to write to the Toastmaster magazine. Okay, they do accept articles from. I would submit to you, they want an approval in principle and then write and all that. So, of course, you can smuggle it in. <laughs> no, you have to write about your experience. Huh? You can just send huh? it that. So they are willing to publish that. That's also one option that anybody can do. Yeah. Also, those who travel to exotic places, take a photograph of yourself with that magazine. You get published. <laughs> yeah, he is yeah. there regularly by many other teachers. In Qatar, it is a regular practice. Anywhere you go, in the Mimali, Hilton, or Jhanka, somewhere at the resort, he will take a photograph of you. The red uh, flag is already up, so we will just take two more minutes. Any other points from 4 by 6? I have one improvement that I have to I am your competition. <laughs> Great. Go ahead. You take. You take. I just want like positive and helpful evaluations. We must get to that. Yes, that is a great point. Same here. Positive, yes. Yeah. I would say it's not positive, but it's not helpful. Not in our club, even in our district and beyond, because the evaluation of pathways projects is not understood as well. I conducted in, a, in the beginning of pathway a previous back. I conducted a training for training. Uh, but not here, I think in Tamil Nadu I conducted also that was. People are doing a generic speech evaluation as we do in the uh, evaluation context. Mm. It is not at all a process project evaluation, including the speech of course. So that is where the evaluator's understanding has to be enhanced also. And so that the real helpfulness comes, including the project aspect and the speech aspect. Right. If I may, I agree. First of all, you must get everybody to read the manual, the speakers yes. and the evaluators. Even the evaluator has to proceed. And secondly, the secondly for important, important, you even ask me what is important. Speeches, you must get people from outside if required, who, who give you the evaluation that the project deserves. We used to have it again, we only have to go back to the post uh, COVID time. It was normal. So, I will come. Regarding achievement and evaluation,
that again if it is built in the form we will take the we will take the thank you thank you thank you sir thank you so much thank you so much thank you Past, this is the director for taking time and then coming here and then giving the test and helping us with the uh, MOT. And uh, what a small gift. I have an immediate pass to them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our background is fine. Interesting insights on how what happens during the club meeting. And if you want to talk, you can I'll show you the contact details of the founder. Oh, for he's an Indian guy, young guy. He's the one who created the product. I have been part of the Postmasters International Group also, and the Facebook group, and he used to provide city scans. He makes a good account. Ah, yeah. <laughs> we had a meeting, and he recorded that meeting, and he sent it to me. And he, you can better and you look at analyze your speech, you, know, you can find out a lot of them. So now we have decided every meeting we will run through that. Like you said, our counter, keywords and all, it gives a very good feedback. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you so much to Pastor Beach for the session. Uh, a lot of uh, truths came out in the moment. Now, finally, it's time to bring the energy back up. Uh, put down your pens and get ready to, you know, speak on your feet. We have Toastmaster, uh, distinguished Toastmaster Sampa today in his Aladdin jacket <laughs> with being the, uh, being the table topics master for today. So I would like to call him up uh, to the stage to bring out his genie and you know just have all of you gasping for words or <laughs> Thank you very much. I think even the previous session was very energetic. Because the free way in which he organized it was very enjoyable. Good participation by many members. So before I start, I want to know how much time I have. 4.30 exactly in my watch. 15 minutes? For today, 20 was given. Okay, I will take 15 minutes. Uh, who are the guests here? Please put up your hand. Are you a first time at guests? Okay. Okay. Yes, what, what means? What means? What means? Okay. Twelve minutes only. Yeah. Time is most. <laughs> okay. Let me first call our star performer, Toastmaster Prayer Singh. Because if. Uh, People like uh, Thomas and Presidency, they don't talk, that's not a meeting at all. <laughs> this is wrong. Yeah. This is right. Okay. You understand? Yeah. Toastmaster Presidency, your topic. This is wrong. Don't give it. Don't show it on the screen. You have to say it. You to, this is articulation training and listening training. In contrast, we have a lot of problem because articulation is not. So your topic will be what a tough one or an easy one. Okay. For every fifty-three boys in India. 53 boys in India, there are only 47 girls. I think it is a problem. Right? For every 53 boys in India, there are 47 girls. I think it is a problem. Yes. This is the reality check for every Indian and we must know this is the hard fact to also as told now. Mm -hmm. For every 53 boys, there is uh, 
uh, comparatively less girls. And uh, might be it was uh, earlier mindset was more of patriarchal and they wanted boys to take over. Things have changed. But the mistake done by that generation, today's generation, they are seeing that impact. The reason when the boys are getting married, they are not able to find the right girl. That's one of the thing which we have openly heard and we have been seen. Let us come to well-known personalities because it's very easy for us to connect. When uh, there is a fight, we are talking about inequality. The fight is not today's story, it's happening since uh, years and this is going to stay. This is how the balance really happens is what I have read it somewhere. The fight has happened 50 years back, it's happening now. Tomorrow the same fight will be happening with some other terms and names. But the fight for equality and gender equality other things is going to stay. When I talk about a great personality, when Mithali Raj, the famous uh, cricketer, women cricketer of our time, she had to tell uh, that um, when she wanted her team to perform in uh, outside, as uh, in outside India, what all struggles she had to uh, face. And even in an interview, when uh, uh, Anchor asked her, who is your favorite uh, cricket star, uh, male cricket star, she had to keep silent for some time because it's not any male star, it is myself I keep as a star. So I think only uh, best way to come out of this gender uh, ratio is a small change in our mindset. Things have changed, we have moved to a better uh, future and we see when given a chance, ladies have taken, have played a super duper role and they have been to Mars, they have been a best mother, they have been number one in every field and I think this problem will be sorted out very soon. She took it on a different dimension. I was thinking of the marriage market. <laughs> The parents of boys are really struggling these days. Okay, next, uh, because he put up his head very vigorously, I will call. No, I said, I have a guest lesson to talk to the parents. Our sustainability champion for the list. <laughs> Remember, that was his byword. Which one do you like better, legacy or pathways? Toastmaster Satish, which one do you like better, legacy or pathways? Which one do I like better, legacy or pathways? When I joined Toastmasters in 2013, there was no pathway which would be legacy. <laughs> so that is something which I started out with. And then over a period of time, pathways came in. And by that time, I was a district director of the district trio. So I had to advocate pathways. I couldn't go stand there and say, I don't like pathways, legacy was good. But if I look at both of them, I think both are unique in one way. It's like the school syllabus. You go and join school, you start our syllabus, after some time they change the syllabus. Do you have a choice to say, no, I will not study? You still have to continue with the new syllabus and move ahead. If you say, I don't want to study, they'll say, okay, go find another education board and go join there. But since I was here at Toastmasters, I continue to be in Toastmasters. I intend to be in Toastmasters for a long time. So I have to kind of adapt myself to whatever happens in Toastmasters. So for me, though I might say that I started with legacy, which was okay. I started with pathways, which is a bit confusing, but end of the day, it's all, all about speeches. And as long as you are studying that course, you better adapt to whatever is the syllabus and try to make the best out of it. That's what I can say. Thank you. Back to you. Yeah. Sadish was adept in using adopt and adapt. <laughs> Both used. Uh, can, because time is less. Can I ask any of the guests who is willing to come? First timer, can you take a topic? You have understood what it is? I will let please come. She has spoken already. Okay. 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 You have an idea. Her good name? I'm Kaushik. Guest of Kausalya to be Toastmaster in Medley. So, because she already knows that she has gone through this process, I will directly give her a topic.
You're familiar with chat GPT? We keep blaming processed food. What is your solution? We keep blaming processed food. What is your solution? Guest counseling. In this fast-paced life, uh, both the husband and the wife both are working. So it's very difficult to manage a home. Like in those days, at least mom or aunts would be at home to take care of the kids' needs. So they always had home-cooked meals. But now since it's a nuclear family, it's always difficult for women. Mostly women are in the kitchen, so to make home-cooked food and uh, to feed the children and take care of their uh, office work also. So what they do, easy option is buying the processed food. It makes the house, uh, no, the woman's life easier, but health-wise it's going to affect the kids. The best solution would be like, uh, uh, the husband also chips in in the kitchen and helps the wife. And even the kids can also help to a great extent in packing the water bottle or the tiffin box. That would be the solution to stop uh, using the processed food because you can't put uh, now the now men are helping women like i have seen in my family and in my friend circle also now even the boys the men they come to the kitchen and they help or at least they help in other things like uh, washing the clothes or something they do some help in the chores <coughs> everyday chores so it's easier for the women now but if everybody in the house chips in and they have a routine I think you can put an end to the process put to a great extent and you can use healthy home. There are a lot of chips in a speech. <laughs> People are chipping in all the time. But uh, men can help women by consuming whatever they put. <laughs> that we are always doing. I saw the colors for the last detailed comments. Sir, I have spoken in a okay. One, Dhenakaran, uh, you don't get too many chances to do this type of job. Ask me to escape actually. Just Master Dhenakaran, our president. The topic for you is the best town in Tamil Nadu for parotas. <laughs> the best town in Tamil Nadu for parotas, in your opinion, First Master Dhenakaran. Uh, Thank you, DTM, um, for the topic. Best town in Tamil Nadu for Parota. Okay, so to answer it, it's made like I have grown up uh, in the areas of Madurai. It's like it's called Tunga Nagaram, like 24 bar 7, wherever you go, you step out, you will see a Parota shop. And I was reading an article sometime back, like where I am here in Chennai, if I order a Parota, I just get Parota. I need to order the side dish, the star, like uh, whatever you want, right? So uh, everything, right? Everything I have to pay, and then I need to get at least I need to pay 200 rupees to eat parotta. But if you go to Madurai or the areas around Madurai, you just order 20 rupees parotta, you will get mutton kurma, chicken kurma, and also a veg kurma, also to tomato chutney, and then the coconut chutney, everything. So the best place to eat parotta is the areas around in and around Madurai. And coming beyond that point, but eating paratha is it healthier for us? You need to think about it. Once or twice, you can get out and then try to taste paratha, but I would suggest try to avoid parathas. If at all you want to really taste, maybe you can go for wheat parathas, which would help and also it will solve your taste buds issues also. So, what do you need? I don't think Medley will mind. <laughs> you are eating parotas with so many doctors, <laughs> dentists, they will love it anyway. Thank you very much. We are only four people uh, doing that uh, timer. Can you give the qualified names? Uh, all, four, 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 four. all four are qualified. <laughs> the names are Toastmaster Priya, Toastmaster Satish, Guest Kausalya and Toastmaster Dinakaran. You can remember and vote whether you like parota, process food, or <laughs> whatever it is. Thank you very much. Back to the team.
thank you DTM Sampath. Uh, the GD granted four wishes today. It could have been more, but we ran out of time. I would, without further delay, I would like to invite the general evaluator to evaluate the meeting and, uh, and to call upon the taxpayers. The GE Toastmaster Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Sir. We listened to two rollicking speeches, informational as well as inspirational. Now to evaluate those speeches, I would like to call the evaluators. They are part of the GATE team. I mentioned GA team were already introduced. This is part of the EV evaluation team. The first evaluator for the first speech. So we had a first speech by Toastmaster Nishana. Nishana. It was an icebreaker speech. For evaluating Toastmaster Nishana, I would like to call upon a person who is a multi-talented person. He is an IT professional as well as an agriculturist. And the speech he gave sometime back on coffee that still lingers in my mind. Please put your hands to welcome Toastmaster Rodi. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for that prolific uh, introduction. <laughs> All right, uh, to uh, uh, my target speaker today is uh, Toastmaster Nishana, who is uh, delivering the first uh, icebreaker speech. So uh, to begin with, uh, Toastmaster Nishana, she had a very good opening line uh, to introduce uh, your speech. You had a very good in uh, introduction line. And then the uh, title was very much in line with your speech, that is Charter and Partner, where you partnered from being a charter accountant to be to start your own firm, that is both plan. Right? Both plan. Yes. yes. Okay. To partner your chartered accountant profession for another profession, it is not easy. That transition use you I mean you quoted that in a very smooth manner, that transition was well not just in your career, but also from where you started off moving from your uh, hometown, small hometown, then wanted to pursue your career in charter accountancy and then start uh, start your own uh, firm. So in your, in your course, you also had a very good mentor, so that mentorship, I think that is very much uh, required in life. Let's say you had a few quotes to quote that were used very appropriately during your course of your speech. It shows that you were very adept at uh, using them. <laughs> and then, uh, moving on, you had uh, your clarity, yes, you had a very good clear voice, there was clarity in your speech, and vocals were still, I mean, it was kind of still from start to end, it could have been varied, you will get better over a period of time, this is just your first speech, so you have a few more speeches, you will get better with that. And then, uh, when it comes to eye contact, you had a very good contact, you kind of covered from side to side, you had, not individual, but you covered the entire room. So, uh, gestures, you seem stuck throughout your uh, speech. Polion, I think you could have, you could have read loose. That way you could have been a bit relaxed. And uh, then, audience awareness, you are very, uh, the audience was, they were quite glued to your speech. Because right from the start to the beginning, we saw the transition. And then we also was wondering, you know, what could happen next after you started your Firm, but by then, you know, it was time was up. Probably, I think you had to end there. And same as, uh, and you for a beginner, for somebody who was delivering their first speech, you seemed like very comfortable for somebody who was delivering their first speech because usually most of them, anybody telling the icebreaker speech, like they are kind of they are a bit trembling and they have some butterflies, but nothing was visible on your face. You, it was quite comfortable, you were smooth from start to end. So uh, to re reiterate, uh, I think overall, for I think it was a very good speech for a beginner. I think uh, you will have uh, to challenge yourself. I think uh, you don't have anything much, but your future speeches will really determine you know, what you need to do and where you are lacking and what you need to work on. Over to you. Over to you. <laughs> so, and probably all the best for your future speeches. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Rohit. Now we come to the second speech. Second speech was by Toastmaster Anuradha. And for evaluating Toastmaster Anuradha's speech, I would like to call a person who is 
more known for his detail. I can give an example. Sometime back, I was going through the YouTube editings, okay, YouTube channels, and then I was watching some of the previous meetings. I was totally surprised because what has happened was some of the intrusions, some of the things that are unwanted and all have been edited in between the speeches itself, in between the meeting proceedings itself. And he gave a very crisp and very nice YouTube editing. Please put your hands to welcome Toastmaster <laughs> Jagan. To evaluate Toastmaster Anuradha's speech. How do you put pressure on me to edit this as well? <laughs> <laughs> Toastmaster Anuradha delivered her speech from the Pathway Dynamic Leadership Level 1, Project 3, Introduction to Vocal Variety and Body Language. There is a legend that says great stories happen to those who have the ability to tell them. I did a boomerang here. Just like how our target speaker, our speaker today, our friend Anuradha, did that boomerang at the end of it, it happened to her the great story and she had the ability to tell to us the great story that happened to her. Now, I find four strengths in her speech in accordance with the project objectives. The first two or not, the second two where I go on to vocal variety and body language. The first is that it's a well-organized speech as the manual even dictates that it has to be a well-organized speech. It was a well-organized speech. Kudos to you for connecting with your mentor. You must have scripted this which was very evident. Mentor this, practice this, given a wide smile. You characterized it. You have to be on the left side of the stage and your son has to be on the right side of the stage which means you had I hadn't gone into even 30 seconds and you're showing the green card. <laughs> so it was a well-organized speech. The second thing is that you have read the manual, which was very evident today. I didn't expect to have through body language thrown at me like this. It's because you have read the manual, you have read the details of it, practiced it with your mentor, which was very clear. Now going into the vocal variety of the speech. Now you had pace, you had volume, and I want to appreciate you for practicing pitch on stage which you may not have done before. You used, both the characters had a pitch and that means you have practiced it before. It may have worked, it may not have worked. I'm not going into those details, but that appreciation and kudos to you who have practiced two different characters on stage. That gives you the pitch that you have taken from the vocal variety. With regards to body language, that's where my fourth point is that you were aware of your intentional as well as unintentional movements. For example, when you talked about, you were here when you said, Amma, that gave me, Amma is when your son, in a sense of distraught, calls you. You are scared. And the body language showed to me the difference in between these two things. The emotion there and the emotion here. Which means you were aware of your body language on stage. You had movement, you moved, subtle movements, not distracting ones. You had the position, you had stance on stage. Now, I have three recommendations for you. One, the tone. In the vocal variety, tone expresses the emotion that we want to communicate. For example, tearful eyes. I didn't feel the tearful eyes. There, the pitch was monotonous. And the tone was also monotonous. You could have also said, forgive me, Amma. There, I, I should have felt your son's forgive me, Amma. The tone of it, the emotion that you want to communicate should reflect the way that you say it. So the tone I would suggest you to work on. The second thing is, manual dictates me to look for distracting moments. I look for the posture, where the book that you were holding was useful at once, but it was distracting at the other end. It was restricting you from opening up. So you could have just put it down, placed it, and opened up. Just come at, come at me with your message. That's all I would have wanted rather than you restricted yourself. To summarize, I have many more points to say, but to summarize, it was a well organized, you have read the manual, the vocal variety with respect to pace, volume, pitch worked, with respect to the body language, you were aware of the unintentional and intentional movements, the way that you delivered Amma and Scared, the movement that you had on stage. The area of recommendations is that if you could work on the tone, your posture, it would have completed this project and you have completed this project, all the very best for your next project. With this, we have come to the evaluations of the speeches. Now, I would like to call the timer to Mr. Venkat Pali to let us know if there are any disqualifications. Uh, yes, Mr. Toastmaster Rohit is qualified. Okay. Fine.
Thank you. So when the voting button comes, like I mean, you can vote for the best speakers, TV speakers, evaluators. Now I would like to call my GATE team, that GAT team, for providing their report. First, I would like to call the grammarian. Why I want to call the grammarian first is so that the timer can calculate the time for grammarian as well as the author. That will give them the opportunity to do that as well. Fine. First, let me call the grammarian to provide this report. Toastmaster Bilsa. Thank you. First of all, uh, the usage of uh, where did they add it? Uh, Toastmaster, Anuradha, Toastmaster, Samad sir. Toastmaster, three of them use the word. So, congratulations to you. And, and the word, of, I, mean, uh, I mean, the theme of the day, perseverance, also used by Toastmaster Kemant and Toastmaster Nishana. Congrats to both of them. In terms, in terms of uh, grammatical uses, I have one small correction. Um, somebody was uh, using completely forgot. So I think it should be completely forgotten. So that's one I mean, thing I should I think that's something which is very right. Completely forgotten. Should be completely forgotten. In terms of uh, usage, the lot of uh, lot of numbers to vote. Um Atisha Jain. Atisha Jain, right? Yeah. He had been uh, using the words like uh, my usage like uh, words like covered is, uh, highly likely, reassess, endeavor, glorify, determine, afraid to give up. Those are the ones which I have noticed. And, uh, Dishana, un unblock, the, unblock the door, inculcated, passion to learn, successful implementation, prodigy, we know the situation. Connecting, looking backward, backward. Will to will to win, redefine. Those are the, the usages I notified. Anuradha, uh, T.M. Anuradha used to involve myself, boomerang, hamdar, 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 Sadish, T.M. Sadish Manan uh, had self evaluation spread to. Spreads so widely, intend to be. Toastmaster uh, Pradeshni, fight for equality, being given a chance. And Toastmaster uh, I mean, Guest Counselor, uh, fast paced life, nuclear family, chip, chipping in. Toastmaster uh, uh, smooth transition. And pursue Toastmaster Jagan, sense of distort, subtle moments. Distracting, distracting moments. So these are the report. Or these are the good usage and you know, observations. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Wilson. Now I'd like to call upon the our counselor, Toastmaster Kema, to go ahead. Please put your hands to welcome Toastmaster. Kema. Congratulations, all. Today we have delivered our two speeches which were good and uh, the message was totally given. And uh, today we have four clean, clear speeches and uh, in those four clean speeches, TM Nishana who has delivered first time his speech, she has delivered a clean speech and our Jagan, he has clean speech and uh, Satish Mandan has clean speech and uh, TM Dinakaran also has clean speech. And for those who doesn't have clean speech, I would like to give one suggestion which I borrowed from DTM, DTM uh, Thomaser, that of micro boss. You can have micro boss during your speech so that your speech and your message should be properly delivered. <coughs> uh, coming to our counters, which were mainly like TM Rohit had 8 R counter. TM Anradha has 2 R counter, 
TM of Priyadarshini has three encounters and then uh, TM Kaushalya has two encounters. Over to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Neemar. I think we have to copyright this word. <laughs> <laughs> now let us call upon the timer Toastmaster Venkat Pali to provide his support. Please put your hands to welcome Toastmaster Venkat Pali. Yes, uh, we have started on time. Uh, but uh, I, I note down the specific timings for the speakers, evaluators, and um, tag team as, of course, movements of the truth. Uh, speaker 1, Toastmaster Nishana took 5 minutes 9 seconds and Toastmaster Anuradha took 5 minutes 35 seconds and the moments of truth uh, taken 53 minutes 30 seconds almost 8, eight, eight and a half minutes it has taken extra and we compensated the time in the table topic Toastmaster Priya for the table topic it took uh, 2 minutes 16 seconds and DDM Satish took 1 minute 19 seconds guest Kausalya took 1 minute 31 seconds and Toastmaster Dinakaran took 1 minute 24 seconds. And coming to evaluations, Toastmaster Rohit took 3 minutes 25 seconds, Toastmaster Jagan taken 3 minutes 45 seconds and coming to tag team, Toastmaster Wilson took 2 minutes 40 seconds and uh, our counter, Toastmaster Heman took 1 minute 20, 10 seconds. That's all the report I Thank you. Thank you for the detailed report. Now we have here about all the uh, gate players, right? gatekeepers, tag players, as well as the evaluators. And now when the voting sheet comes, please vote for the best tag player as well. Now it's time for me to provide the overall feedback for the entire conduct of this meeting. So the, as I mentioned, there are five parameters against which I have evaluated, I have evaluated this meeting. That is timeliness, enthusiasm, preparation, organization, as well as performance. Uh, Pre-meeting, so this is the precursor for any important meeting. So the, there was a lot of preparation that has gone into the conduct of the meeting. So WhatsApp group was created, <coughs> then we had the role players identified at the right time by Thursday itself, and then the agenda was prepared, posters were sent, flyers were sent, all these were meticulously done by the XCOM, very good job done. One suggestion I would give here is, uh, give credit to the subcommittee. In case if a subcommittee member or a volunteer has done something, please give credit, credit to that person also. See, for example, if that person has prepared some flyer or anything, just give that credit so that that person will be feeling motivated to provide more inputs. Then uh, I would suggest one more thing for the um, role players. Okay. See, this tag role is very important because this is the place where, this is that role where we can develop active listening. But there are very few who are volunteering for this role. So we have to ensure that this tag role also is taken up as one of the important roles so that we can fill up this on time. Because this is one of the time and our counter we have to spend some time to get those role players. So please ensure that there is a learning in this role also. Please just go ahead and then fill up these roles. Then uh, attendance, I would say like uh, we are a 42 member strong club. But how many are attending here? Just 18. Okay. So including the members, uh, including the guests it is around 21, 22. But we have to be at least 50% and above from the membership perspective, from the members who are attending this. So the attendance definitely needs to be improved. Uh, then I would say like the arrangement, okay, so uh, we came early here, but, uh, but the thing here is, uh, when there is a situation, we get the leaders, right? So where leaders are made is what Toastmasters motor is all about, and then here also the same case. When there was a situation, we had the leaders. For example, Nishana, she was arranging the Chairs, very well done. Thank you for that. Okay. So then, uh, Venkat Pali, I would like to recommend these people, like uh, comment these people, uh, Shankar Renu, Jagan, uh, for in exhibiting server leadership by coming early and then ensuring that everything is in place before we start the meeting. We started the meeting on time. Then um, I would say, like uh, from a close most of the day perspective, like I mean, it was very well explained. What is the theme of the day, and then why we have to have that? What are the examples? Very, very well conducted flow. And then the speeches. One one suggestion I would say here is, uh, please select your pathways before going to the speech itself. Okay. So that will give a perspective of why you are going for a certain pathways itself, and then you will go and provide your speeches. 
Toast was a nishana, it was not like an icebreaker speech. Very well done. Then I would say like one of the important messages I got from that speech is mentoring. So how your mentor has helped you shaping your career as well as your aspirations. Very well done. Then Toastmaster Anuradha, one thing, one takeaway I have got here is the kids shape themselves by observing the parents, which is a very profound message for anybody to follow. Then the TT Master, I would, um, I would say like, the first thing what he did was ensuring that how much of time is left out and then he shaped his number of questions accordingly, who could be called and all those stuff. That is a very thoughtful thing I would say. And this is a person who is adept in adapting. <laughs> then that players, like I mean they did a good job, I would say um, it is a, it's a job like I mean where you have to be continuously looking at the uh, presenters as well as role players, speakers and have to note down each and every minute details. Very well done. And evaluation, it was on spot and provided the right kind of ammunition that is required. Then uh, MOT, I would say like I mean it's a reflection of truth and wherein like I mean we have got a lot of inputs and it's a very interactive session and it went on very smoothly I would say. Thank you Toastmaster uh, Sabirman for providing us that so much. Then I would say like uh, some other things, voting, uh, we can explain this, what is the process earlier so that uh, we know upfront like I mean whether it is QR code or manual suggestions and all those stuff. So that is one thing I would say. And then uh, voting also we have to ensure that everybody have voted or not. Okay. Because in the past like I have seen only 30% have voted. Okay. So we have to ensure that most number of attendees are able in the position to be able to vote. So that, that will provide an input for XCOM also to learn more. And I would suggest the members also, in case if you are not clear of something, please ask. Okay, so that you will be in a position to provide your votes as well. Then uh, last important thing, Anuradha, thank you for sharing the photos in the group. It was like looking at that live meeting as such. Okay. So these are the inputs I have. It was a very conduct well conducted meeting. There was uh, some uh, inputs I shared, but uh, you can take it in a positive manner and do it in a constructive manner so that we as a team will do on more things on a continuously improved basis as such. With this, I have come to the end of my general evaluation. I would like to hand over to the Toastmaster of the day to conduct the proceedings as well. Thank you so much, uh, General Evaluator Toastmaster Sadhana. So, uh, at this point, I would like to call upon uh, like the VPE or VPPR to collect votes from all of the members. So I request you to please vote for the qualified speakers for all of the three sections of the meeting. And these votes will be compiled at the end and then we'll have the awards for the best speaker, uh, best, uh, best prepared speech, best TV speaker, evaluator and the best role player. So with that said, and just to conclude the theme for the day, which was perseverance. I hope, uh, so everybody talks about perseverance in the sense that, you know, you need to work hard. But we've been hearing those stories ever since uh, we were young. I hope the different perspective today helps all of us at least take a moment and think whether something is worth persevering for or whether it is better to just take a step back and evaluate whether that is something you even want to do, whether it moves you closer to your goal or not. And that said, uh, I rest the theme for the day. And uh, let's just collect votes. So, yeah. Yeah. So, what's up? Oh, there's a QR code. Okay. So, there's a QR code that will circulate, and you know you can scan it and then vote. So, yeah, like, so I'll hand it over to Toastmaster Dinakaran. Thank you, everyone, and I rest with you for today. Uh, hope you all had a great time. We are still not done yet, so we have a small business session followed by uh, so we are setting up. Uh, in the meantime, um, any guest feedback? So we would like to do some feedback. According to me, it's a great thing to come back to the in-person meetings. That's the first thing, because a lot of clubs are now struggling with quality meeting and membership and all that because we are not in person. Two years of being in online board has actually done a lot of damage to 
those past few meetings because people have lost the touch of being in person and also the entire objective of getting to know each other and getting that feedback in person, standing in front of an audience. All that was lost. And I'm happy to see that Bentley is one of the first clubs to start in person meetings back and I could kind of visualize the old culture coming back. So that was a positive for me. And we see a lot of people here today to prepare speeches, one being an icebreaker speech and also the involvement of everybody. So that's something which is more positive. Obviously, we would like to see more members, but I think slowly that will happen. But overall, yes, it was a good and positive experience for me to be part of this thing. Thank you, Excuse me, sure. yes. Sure. Great to have you. Sure. sure. So, so, yes, Councilor, would you like to do something like this? day how to uh, uh, talk about the table topics. Uh, I was called after uh, Priyadashni ma'am and the gentleman over here the, to talk about the uh, table topic uh, Topic he gave me. It was a tall order to cater to but still I think I tried. If the, after coming to Toastmasters and gaining confidence that I can speak, uh, I can do impromptu speak. And I will adapt to it in course of the time, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, like, did you enjoy today? How was yes. your experience? Uh, all the topics chosen, the Before that, uh, we would request uh, Tos, uh, Tosmas Nishama to come here for a uh, few young organization for the icebreaker speech. Is it here? Camera? It, it should be there. It, it is there. Come on, come on, please. But other Tosmasters can be the full one. And it was very inspirational, and uh, it was a good job. Uh, yeah. Now it's time for the tea. Uh, <laughs> so, one of our two winners, yeah. best Bengal player, Toastmaster Sam. Okay, sir. Yes. 
what is the grade really? Mm -hmm. Sir, sir, one second, one second. Not sure. See, one more thing, like we have forwarded that survey again. Um, so we have published the survey to get the feedback from all the members. So it has covered a lot of aspects. It would be helpful to really like you guys respond to the survey and uh, so that we can plan for the needed for the club. So, so far we have got only the response from four or five people. So please take uh, time. That it would not take more than 10 minutes. Please spend some 10 minutes of the time and then we'll complete the survey. With this we are coming to the end of the meeting. So this honor is given and declared. Thank you.